How do you approach validation in the domain layer? I think one of the most important things in software engineering is having options. So in this video, I'm going to give you two options for solving validation in the domain layer. And then I'm going to leave it up to you to decide which option you are going to use in your own application. Hi, my name is Milan and welcome to another video in the clean architecture and domain driven design series. This video is going to focus on the validation of the domain layer. As I said, I'm going to give you two popular solutions that I have used before successfully. One is using exceptions and the other one is using result objects. So let's see how we would implement these approaches. We are going to start off from the gathering entity that we created in one of the previous videos. If you didn't watch that video by any chance, I suggest you go ahead and watch that one first before proceeding with this one. Inside of the gathering entity, we have a few methods where we perform validation. The first one I'm going to check is gathering create. Let's see what we have here. As you can see in the create method, we first create a new gathering instance by calling the constructor. And then we call the calculate gathering type details method to perform some calculation. Let's see what we have inside of that method. As you can see, we are performing separate validations based on the gathering type, which is an enum. And it has two possible values. One is with a fixed number of attendees. The other one is with expiration for invitations. Depending on the gathering type, we perform a different validation. In this case, we are throwing exceptions to implement our validation logic. When our domain rule is broken, we throw an exception signaling to the caller that something is wrong. This is also going to be the first approach that we are going to use for implementing validation. So whenever we have a domain rule that is broken, we throw an exception. In this case, we are throwing the base exception class, which isn't really the recommended approach because it doesn't carry any meaning other than the message that we are passing in. What I usually advise is to create a custom exception for each validation rule. So here I prepared in the exceptions folder a base domain exception class that we are going to use for implementing exceptions in the domain layer. As you can see, it's very simple. It just inherits from the base exception class and defines only one constructor. Let's go ahead and create a few domain exceptions. The first one is going to be for the gathering maximum number of attendees in case when it is null. So gathering maximum number of attendees is null domain exception. I'm going to use the file scope namespace, remove the unnecessary using statements. I'm going to make the, pub the class public also make it sealed because I'm not going to inherit from it and it's going to inherit the domain exception. Let's go ahead and implement the constructor. And at this point, we can already use this exception in our gathering entity. So instead of throwing the base exception here, I'm going to throw our custom exception and everything remains as before. Let's also do the same for our second exception. This one is the, when the invitations valid before in hours is null. So I will use the same approach. Gathering invitations valid before in hours is null domain exception. I'll do the same thing again. Public sealed inherits from domain exception and defines the constructor. And we can go ahead and use it in our gathering entity. At this point, this is looking much better. And let me explain why. What is the benefit of throwing exceptions for implementing validation? In this case, we are achieving a few things. Whenever our code reaches this line, it's going to throw an exception. This means that our code will not proceed and we won't end up creating an entity in an invalid state. So this is defending our entity constraints. Another benefit is that throwing exceptions is going to generate a stack trace so that you can catch the exception in one of the upper layers, log the error, and then in the log, you will be able to see which line of code through the exception. This will make it easier for you to perform debugging. One more benefit is when you are using specific custom domain exceptions and you see that exception in the error logs, you are able to accurately pinpoint what caused the exception. Of course, everything is a trade-off in software engineering. So when we are using exceptions to enforce validation, we gain all of the things that I just mentioned. But this comes at the cost of performance in the case when the exception is actually thrown. So please keep this in mind if you want to use this approach. I'm going to leave this as is. And now I'm going to show you the second approach. Let's move over to the send invitation method. 
As you can see, this one was also implemented in a similar fashion, where we are again throwing exceptions to enforce our entity constraints. However, this time I'm going to show you a completely different approach. We won't be using exceptions at all. We are going to be using result objects. For this purpose, I already prepared a result object, so I won't be implementing it from scratch. The result class is very simple, as you can see. It contains an is success and is failure flag with an error attached to it. I also added the generic result class, which additionally has a value of type t value, which is our generic parameter. And let me also show you the error class. The code is used so that we can uniquely identify our errors and the message is used to provide some additional debugging information. Let's go back to the gathering class and see how we would use this result object. The first thing I'm going to do is change the return type of the send invitation method. I'm going to change it to result of invitation. So now we are returning a result object. Instead of throwing exceptions, I'm going to return a failure result. So here I'm going to say return result.failure of invitation because it has to be of the same type. And I need to create a new error which accepts two arguments. One is the message which I'm going to leave as is. And the first is the code which uniquely identifies this error. So I'm going to say gathering and I'm going to say inviting creator because this is the validation that we are performing. And just fix this so that everything compiles. This is how validation would look like when we are using result objects. Let's also do the same here. I'm going to cut this message. I'm going to return a result here. So I'm going to say return result failure, pass in the invitation as the generic argument, create a new error. And the code this time is going to be gathering already passed because this is the validation where we are checking that the gathering has not already completed and we will use the same message as before. All right, this covers our validation logic. So if we are trying to send the invitation to the creator of the gathering, we're going to return a gathering inviting creator error. If the gathering has already passed, we are going to return a gathering already passed error. And in the happy path, we just return the invitation. Notice that here I'm returning an invitation object, but the result here is of type result invitation. How this works is inside of the generic result class, I defined a static implicit operator for converting an object of type t value into a result of t value. Let's go back to our gathering entity. Remember that we changed the result of the send invitation method. So this affects the color of our code. And as you can see, we have one reference here inside of the send invitation command handler. I'm going to go there and fix the compile issues. Let's make the result of the send invitation method explicit so that it is more clear what we are working with. As you can see here, we have an invitation result. So let's rename the variable accordingly. So invitation result and Remember that now we don't have an exception being thrown if our validation fails. So we have to check if the invitation result is failure. Let's, for example, log error and just return and leave the method. Otherwise, the invitation result is successful and we can safely access the value which represents our invitation object. And everything remains the same as before. Let's again go back to the gathering entity. Notice that we are always creating a new instance of the error. And this is kind of cumbersome to always have to create a new error instance. What I usually like to do is to define these errors ahead of time. So I'm going to do that now. I'll create a new folder. I'll call it errors. And inside of that folder, I'm going to create a new class, which I will call domain errors. I'm going to make this class static. And I'm also going to create another static class inside of it which will be called gathering. And inside of the nested gathering class, I'm going to define our errors. So I'm going to copy paste the error from here so that I can save some time. I'll create a new public static read-only field of type error, which I will call inviting creator. And I'm going to assign it the value that we just copied. Okay, let's also do that for our second error. This one is already passed. So back in domain errors, I create another public static read-only field that returns an error, which is called already passed, and I assign it the value that we just copied. The point of going through all of this trouble is now we can go back to our gathering entity, and instead of creating a new error here, we can say domain errors, gathering, and in this 
case inviting creator and we can do the same thing below domain errors gathering already passed now take a look at how much more expressive our code is we are explicitly saying which error occurred in this line which error occurred in this line and it makes our method much more readable comparing that to the above approach where we are throwing custom exceptions you can see that it's not as nice to read however i would argue that this approach is much more readable and much more maintainable of course this approach also comes with its own trade-offs so let me discuss what i think are the pros and cons when we are using the result object we are making our methods explicit so that the caller of our method knows to expect that this method can either succeed or fail and act accordingly additionally when we have validation failures we don't have to pay the performance cost of throwing exceptions. We just return a failure result, which is performant. One additional thing is as the project grows and you keep creating more and more domain errors, over time, you start to create a very nice catalog of possible errors in the domain layer. This can be very useful for anybody new that is coming to the project. They can just take a look at all of the possible errors in the domain and get a nice idea of what are some of the possible error types. When using result objects, you lose the benefit that you have with throwing exceptions, where at the line that you throw an exception, the execution of your code stops, an exception is thrown, and a stack trace is generated. In this case, there is no stack trace. So it makes it a little bit harder to figure out where in the code a certain error occurred, but this can be mitigated with proper logging in your system, so I don't consider it much of a downside. All right, I showed you two possible approaches for implementing validation in your domain layer. One approach was using custom domain exceptions and throwing exception when we have a broken rule. The other approach was using result objects and returning failure results when we have a certain domain constraint that has been broken. I also discussed what are the pros and cons of each approach and I leave it up to you to decide which approach you like the most and which one you would possibly use in your applications. I would really like to know how you approach domain validation. So please let me know in the comments and we can start a nice discussion on this topic. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, keep being awesome.